Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar today. I'm here again with Eleni. Hello, Eleni. How are you? Hello, Gemma. Very happy to be here again. It's been such an interesting week, and I'm always excited to collaborate and talk professionally with lots of amazing people. So it's lovely to be here. Hi. I'm yeah, it's like why Eleni. Really nice yeah. to have you here. And I will, I will try the, your tips from last week. Yes, I've been we drinking talk. water in the morning and everything, and it's good. I can, I can corroborate so this. Yeah, I think this whole uh, life work balance theme was a good one for us to be starting off with. And for a lot of people watching, if you didn't see that video, go back and check it out because we talked about some very easy tips. And one main thing was water. Like yeah. just drinking more water before you brush your teeth can change your whole energy system. So it worked for you, Gemma? Yeah, it worked. It's even more energy. I feel like more awake. I don't know how to explain it with work. Yeah. But yeah, it's good. That's also, good. I like it. Talk start your day a little bit easier doesn't it because you kind of start off drinking and you're not worrying anymore about the fact that you feel sleepy so you're just drinking and hydrating so it's quite a fun one to try and yeah. today we're going to go into personal branding so everybody out there that doesn't know Gemma I'm sure many of you do because it's on her channel here that you're all watching yeah. but for those of you who watch the video somewhere else you'll know that uh, we're from very different industries. I'm a clinical psychologist, peak performance strategist, and Gemma is actually a strategist for marketing. And she works a lot on communication, diversity and inclusion, and she's also a speaker. But what's so interesting about her is that she really knows a lot about the neurological and neuroscientific areas mm -hmm. of marketing. And she's also a brilliant strategist. So today, you're going to tell us all about personal branding. And because these are mm. nice, crisp videos, we're not going to, you know, bore anyone. We've got some really great tips. So I want to start off, uh, Gemma, by getting some of that knowledge out of you now. Okay. And uh, to help people understand what personal branding really is and what's different between that and branding in general. Yeah, well, personal branding is about yourself. It's not branding, it's a company. When you talk uh -huh. only about branding, you are talking about the brand and the company and the personality of the company. But when you talk about personal branding, it's your person. So my Gemma Rubio personal brand. And the personal brand is something that all of us have. Even if you create it or not, you have it because it's what people think and see about you, what they say about you to other people when you are not there. So for example, if someone asks me, who is Elenico? I can say, oh, she's a really nice person. She is, really knows a lot about strategy and about psychology. So it's the, the image people have about yourself. Yeah. So we'll have one brand, but we need to work on it because otherwise people can talk about some things that are maybe not what we want to talk about us. That's why it's good to define it. Yeah, and it's so important in business now, isn't it? Because yeah. a lot of yes. people are building their businesses around their own personal reputation. And yeah. I think now when you're online, um, you know, there's so many ways where you have to connect more with people and you have <laughs> to really uh, realize that whatever you say and don't say actually is reflecting something about you and your work. So branding now as you work with it in your business as a marketing strategist is, um, you know, something that I think very many business trainers and coaches include in business training. Mm -hmm. So tell us just really quickly then why is it so important to define and to know your personal brand? In a yeah. nutshell, like why yes. is it so important? Yeah, as what you say, it's really important to know your personal brand, even if you are in a company, if you are an employee, because we don't talk more about business to business or business to customer. We talk more about people to people, person to person. So you want to work with people that you feel identify and that you connect really good. And for that, you need to be your, your true self. You need to be unique. You need to be you. And you need to know really which aspects of your personality you want to bring up and how do you want the people to see you? So it's really good to define it because, for example, in marketing strategy, you can you can Google it and you find thousands of people doing marketing strategy. But you will do it with the person that connected with you, with the one who have the personal brand that you feel identify and you trust. Because if you don't trust that person, you are not going to work with them. So it's really so important to define it really good and to know yeah. what your brand is. So you attract those kind of people that agree or uh, 
they also can relate to you. They mm -hmm. agree with you. They also yeah. find what you find important, important. They have the same values. So if uh, we can go maybe just a little bit deeper, how does it really help someone's business schema when, well, it can, when it's very clearly defined? Uh, let's say you've built your business around your own personality, mm -hmm. your own person. How does it really help your business? Yeah, well, it helps a lot because what I told you, the people need to trust you and need to, mm -hmm. to know trust. what. Yeah, trust is really important. And also to connection because you want to belong to a group. People, the humans, we need to belong to a group and we prefer to belong to groups with people that we identify that we are more or less the same or, we, or someone we like to be like them. But also can help you not only for your business, also when you are looking for a job, for example, if you want to create your personal brand, not create because you have it, but you want to adapt to your situation, it's not the same if you want to find a work, a job in a bank or you want to work for Google. Because the personal brand is not only what you put in social media, it's the way you talk, the way you move, the way you're, if you smile or you don't smile. If you go to a meeting and you say hi to everyone or if you stop in a corner, you are showing your personality, you are showing your personal brand. So for example, if you want to find a job in Google, you will be dressed more or less like the kind of people that work in Google. But if you work in a bank, you cannot go dressed the same way. Or if you go to a trade show, and it's a tech with a lot of startups event, your personal brand have to be adapted. So you, your mentality have to belong to that place. I don't know if I explain myself, but you need to connect not only in the, in the way you talk in social media, but also the way your person is. So the personal brand mm -hmm. is a, first you need to know your purpose. What is your purpose in life? What do you want to get? Then you need to see how the people see you and what is the image they have. So it's really important to ask your coworkers, your family, friends, what do they think about you? And you need to, to ask the people that you trust and they can tell you the truth. So then you say, okay, they see me like, like A, B, C. I want to show A, B, but the C is not something that I want to be in my personality. So how can I show who really I am? So do you have to create a strategy, but based on who you are, what is your purpose? And what do you want the people to get from you? So I really understand what you mean. And I think in psychology, we also understand that our identity, our personality, you know, is mm -hmm. such an important part of yes. uh, how we come across, what we end up doing, how we take action, you know, all these things. And uh, in a business, it's so important to also uh, be authentic, you know. So I think yes. it's important that people know who they are so that they can build a personal brand that's true and a, a yes. good reflection of who they are. I liked what you said also about if there's something about you that people see about you that you don't want um, to be in your personal brand, what would you do with it? Like how do you – can you – get more quiet on certain parts of your personality that you don't want to have in your personal brand or what would you well, recommend this is, for that? This is the most difficult part because usually you think people see you in one way, but sometimes it's not exactly that way. And maybe there are things that you don't like about yourself, but you don't really know you have them. So when the people tell you, you have to think, oh, so sometimes you also have to work in your own behaviors and make some changes because I don't know, maybe you are too impulsive. And people tell you, you are too impulsive. And it's like, oh, people see me as impulsive. I need to change that. I need to work on that. So when you, once you know your purpose and what do you want to get, also this part is easier to do because if you know that you are, you are a leader and you want to be a leader, you cannot be bossy. So if the people see you as a bossy person, then it's like, okay, it doesn't match with my purpose. What can I do? How can I work on it? And then it's good to work, like, for example, I would like me to, people to think that I'm trustful, I'm funny, and I do my work on time. So when you know what you want the people to see, you can start working on it and you can improve, improve your person also. And then you can, because one important thing also is to, to match the expectations of the people. So if you show yourself as a trustworthy person, then you have to behave as a trustworthy person. And if you say... If you're in your communication, you show that you are always on time and you deliver fast, then you have to deliver fast. So everything is a combination. First, you need to work in your, in your purpose and know yourself really good. And then when the people tell you how they see you, maybe what they tell you, you like it. And then it's like, oh, okay, that's good. I'm going to continue promoting what the people is seeing in me. And if you don't like it, it's to say, okay, then I need to change. Because if this is 
if I don't think that I'm that way, but it's what people is receiving from me, maybe I don't know that I'm doing something and I'm doing it. So it's, you need to work on yourself a lot before you start publishing in social media and everything. This is the last step. And it's not easy for everyone because to, to accept some things are difficult sometimes. Yeah, I think it's so important then from what you're saying to also really decide if you're ready to build yeah. a business around your person, around your personality, and if you know enough about yourself and if you can deal with the criticism because when you put yourself yeah. out there and you're very visible, uh, you can be you know, getting feedback that you don't agree with or that you mm -hmm. don't want to see in yourself. And that's mm -hmm. just tough because everybody is uh, getting your communication whether – you like what they get or not, that's how they're seeing you. So it's a very yeah. important thing you said about also being willing to work on whatever inconsistency you have inside mm -hmm. of you and make sure that you have a way to either improve that mm -hmm. or to admit it and then yes. downplay it a little bit or, or work on it so that you can, um, you know, maybe highlight more other things that, that would be more relevant or more useful. And, I've actually tried what you said, uh, Geba, once before in a leadership evaluation, and it was quite uh, shocking to hear people's feedback in certain areas and also mm -hmm. quite surprising and nice in other areas. So I think it's a very good exercise to do that research. So everybody listening, maybe you can take that advice from Gemma and actually ask a few of your clients, what do they really like about you? Maybe also find out if that's what you like about yourself <laughs> and maybe then see if you're ready because maybe you still have to do some work before you actually get that set up. I noticed also you said some really interesting things as well about um, how it's so important for people to actually know they have to define what their personal brand is. Mm -hmm. So now I want you to see if you can give us three tips like, if you were to choose the three most important things that you have to consider um, about your audience, because we've spoken yes. now about mm -hmm. you, right? But your audience is also so important. So let's talk about that. What tips can you give people to understand who they're actually talking to or who they might want to be talking to and what their brand uh, does to match up with the right following, the right fans, the right tribe, the right audience? It was first, you need to know your purpose and your personality really good. You need to work on yourself first. Okay. Because if you know your, to who do you want to talk, but you don't know how to present yourself, then it's not going to match. So then when, once you know your purpose and what do you want to get and who you are, and then you know to who do you want to talk, it's good to know how they see you. And of course, what you say, sometimes people tell you things that you don't like, but you, everyone needs to understand that we are not going to lie to everyone. So this is something that we need to, to understand and to accept. And sometimes it's what the people say is the haters hate the, the, the best. So if, they, if you have haters, you are doing good because otherwise <laughs> the people don't, don't pay attention to you. So this is yes, good to, yes. to have haters is a good right. sign. Yeah, yeah. And for example, there are things that maybe people tell you that are not good or about yourself. But for example, myself, I talk too fast. And I know I talk fast and everyone tells me that I should talk slower. And I try, but I cannot do it. So then I accept it. It's like, okay, that's the way I talk. And I don't want to change it. I don't want to work and invest time to talk slow because then it's not me. I don't know how to do it. So then you need to accept that. And then when, when you know who you are and what you want and to who do you have to talk, then it's so easy because it's talking like one person to one person. But once you are going to communicate with them, you need to define really good who is your target. Mm. To who do you want to talk? But really well defined. Yeah. Not, for example, not say woman with 30 years old. This is not, this doesn't tell you anything. It's, for yeah. example, woman 30 years old, engineer, they, they work in a big corporate. So you have to define really specific thing mm -hmm. because you don't talk to the same the same way to a 30 years old waiter than to a 30 years old teacher than to a 30 years old engineer. So you need to define really well the position and the country where they are and everything in order to talk to them. Then everyone can listen to you and everyone can buy your product and everything, but you need to talk to someone. Yeah. So it's really important to define this really good. When you say define, you mean to make it as detailed as possible like yes. I remember 
when I was looking at different people that I wanted to help and different people that I felt I could help. And this is a, maybe a good example. Maybe we can also tweak it as an example for people. Like there's different people that we can all work with. I think this mm -hmm. is where it gets confusing because maybe you want to help too many people and then you have yeah. to make a choice, right? So let's say yes. like for me a few years ago, I decided I really want to see more women uh, visible for yes. the knowledge, expertise, research, and very unique opinion they have about whatever topic they're passionate about. And then I went even more de into detail and said, well, then I want to help very specific speakers and leaders that are revolutionizing women's health. Yes. But now here's my question to someone like you, like a mar marketing strategist. Let's say you find your audience now, right? Like yes. I found my audience, I work with them, I do conferences for them, I set them up. Sometimes I can see that um, they don't all share the same mindset, you know? So... Yes. How much should I be adjusting my personal brand to try to please these different mindsets? And I think this is where people get confused because often you see sometimes people become inauthentic then or they try and be something that they're not mm -hmm. yes. to try and get the audience and or they try uh, to be everything and then the audience is too wide. So what yes. advice would you give people when they're in those one of those two examples? The thing is, you, you should never change your personal brand because your personal brand is your personality, is your true self. Right. So you should never adapt it to anyone. The only thing you need to adapt is the, the way you talk to them. But only the wow. way, because you need them to understand you. If you talk to a kid, it's like me. I'm Gemma Rubio. If I talk to a kid, three years old, I talk in a different way than if I talk to a lawyer. So the personal brand is the same. The only, way you, the only thing you need to know, your target, is to know how the words you need to use for them to understand you and to get your information. But not every product is for everyone and you cannot adapt for everyone. Like for example, the, the example that I always use is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola in their advertisements, they are not talking to kids. They are not talking to 60 years old people. They talk to young people and they have their target in the in young people and happy people. They are always talking about party, happiness and things, but everyone can drink a Coke. It's not that the product is only for this kind of people, but when they talk, they need to choose someone. Or Spotify. Spotify, they have an article online in their blog that is really good about it, that they have their buyer persona defined. They have five buyer persona. And it's music. Spotify, everyone can use music. Every, every age, every status, everything. Everyone can use it. But they talk to these five people. They don't talk to kids, for example. And my daughters, they use Spotify. But they talk to their target. And then it will, everyone can use their product. They have their own personality, but they need to choose. So with the, per, the personal branding is the same. You have to be yourself and true yeah. to yourself and never yeah. change your personality because it's you. I, you yeah. can only change it if you want to change something from yourself, but not for people. I love that. So you don't change your personal branding. You change the way you're communicating. Yes, and that's the important part to get someone involved to help you because I can see sometimes we think that we get, we're communicating really well. Like you tell somebody what you think you need or you tell them what you think, but they don't really understand. And sure. they think they understand even and then they might even go out and buy you the certain mm -hmm. salt you asked for. But when they come back, you realize and they realize it's not the actual salt under the same brand that you mm -hmm. asked for. They just got yes. the Himalayan salt, but they didn't look for the one that's in a crushing bath or whatever. So mm -hmm. how you've explained it on all your copy, on all your website, I mean, that's where it gets pretty confusing. And that's the yes. kind of thing that I think uh, experts can really help with. So I think you've answered so many of these questions um, with a very simple, you know, easy to follow kind of approach. So maybe I can ask you to give me like, one of your final highlights like what's one final tip you would tell people if they're really struggling with their branding i would say always be yourself and be true to yourself and if you if you are lost because sometimes it's, it looks overwhelming because you have to think about many things stop just stop and take a paper and a pen and write down who do you are and how do you want people to see you what do you think is your core values and then mm -hmm. start from there Fantastic advice. It's always great. I remember my art teachers always saying, stop 
when you're painting or drawing or whatever, go and stand at the back of the room and look at what you've done. And then don't do anything. Stay there for a while until you feel inspired. And I think it's a very good piece of advice for many things. We do get yeah. too involved and overwhelmed often. So thank you so much, uh, Hema. It's been great ch chatting to you. And I also think maybe we can think a little bit about the homework for this week. What do you recommend people can do until we chat next week again? Well, I think it's good to, to think about what is your purpose? What do you want to get? What do you want to do with your life? Are you looking for a new job? Do you want to get a promotion in your job? Do you want to open your own company? What do you want to do? And how do you want to do it? Right. And then this is a good thing to do. And another one is to ask people around you, what do I do good? What do they think I do good? What do they think I do bad? And what do they think I can improve? Fantastic. And then from there, you can start working. Yeah. So, and if somebody's already running a business and they want to like improve their branding, they can definitely do that last one that you said is really get the feedback yeah. from people around them yeah, this is and really important. Also start looking at what do they do good? What do they not do good? I'm going to go and investigate my community as well so I can refine my oh, personal branding with your tips and I'll share with you next week what I found and then we'll take the next uh, the next webinar onto the next subject and I think we're doing something around the persona of a company, yes. how um, sure. you really present yourself as a culture, as a company, or as an organization. And if you're an individual solo entrepreneur, we're also going to be able to help people with that type of subject. So I'm looking forward to that one, Gemma. Thanks so much. Yeah, me too. Looking forward to see you again, Eleni. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Thank Thanks you, for watching. Bye.